Coping with COVID and In It Together present Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by the Diabetes Advisory Council of South Carolina and DHEX Division of Diabetes and Heart Disease Management. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Fight the spread and take a stand against coronavirus. Wear a mask in public. Stay at least six feet apart from others and get tested. Join us and fight the spread. Visit scdheck.gov slash COVID-19. You're watching Coping with COVID updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. I'm Trey Taylor and it's Wednesday. That means it's Wellness Wednesday. In it together, SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council present every Wellness Wednesday right here on Coping with COVID. And today we're talking about pets and the positive effects they have on our health. We visited with the folks at Palmetto Life Support in Columbia, and we'll hear about that great facility and how you can support them and take home a fur baby of yourself. But first, a friend to the show, Dr. Jane Kelly, the state's assistant epidemiologist, joins us with her dogs and cats and lions and tigers <laughs> and bears, oh my. And uh, she's going to tell us how you can get calm, even lower your blood pressure by having an animal. Also, tell us about some of her animals coming up next. Dr. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you. Absolutely. Got a full house over there. We can't wait to hear all about it. <laughs> That's coming up next on Coping with COVID, but first, your COVID community updates. For the first time in three months, COVID numbers are down in South Carolina. November 15th was the last time DHEC reported less than 1,000 new cases in one day. Cases spiked to 6,000 one day last month, but have declined since then. Now, as of yesterday, South Carolina has 868 new COVID cases and 16 deaths. Several more people have expressed an interest in Columbia City Council. Attorney Tina Herbert is reportedly considering a run for District 1, the seat longtime council member Sam Davis is retiring from. Herbert, who practices law at Mickelin Bass and formerly led the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, also practiced law with Steve Benjamin before he was elected mayor in 2010. He said she would be an asset to the council. Meanwhile, IT manager Heather Bauer has also said she will run for city council. She's running for the at-large seat that's currently being held by Tamika Devine, who, as you know, is running for mayor. Lastly, conservative radio talk show icon Rush Limbaugh has died. Limbaugh revolutionized talk radio, becoming its biggest and most influential star. His reign on TV radio spanned over three decades, reaching more than 15 million listeners on his syndicated show. The 70-year-old announced last February he had lung cancer, and later President Trump surprised him with a Medal of Honor during the State of the Union address. Once again, Rush Limbaugh was 70 years old. SCD Heck has the most up-to-date list of time, states, and location for COVID testing and vaccinations in South Carolina. Visit scdheck.gov for more information. Now, for COVID testing, you can also visit gogettested.com. There, you can make an appointment to get a test, make um, get to find out the location, and get your results in 48 hours. Also, the DHEC Care Line is available if you want to organize a COVID screening at your event or at your neighborhood. The DHEC Care Line also has information on testing, transportation to get a test, and again, the COVID vaccine. Now, if you are unable to get uh, tested or to go out to get tested, Richland and Clarendon County paramedics are actually offering in-home COVID screening. Call 911 for more information. COVID vaccinations are being held at several locations. Uh, Lexington Medical Center is uh, conducting COVID vaccinations. Also, uh, those folks who are veterans can get vaccinated at the VA. That information uh, should be on the screen. Also, Kroger Pharmacies are offering COVID vaccines. Check the screen for details for that and also for CVS. Now, there is a healthcare seminar that is taking place uh, this Thursday, tomorrow, for uh, African Americans in healthcare. It's called Black Health Matters. You see the information on the screen. It's uh, tomorrow evening around 6 p.m.
Now, if you're having some challenges coping with COVID financially, the NAACP is uh, launching a housing assistance program. This is going to help landlords, mortgage companies, and tenants. For more information, contact the Columbia branch of the NAACP. Now, that website and toll-free number from the SC Bar Association and SC Legal Services is still up and running. You can also still get some help if uh, you need rental help or mortgage assistance. The City of Columbia continues their six-month payment plan for water bills and payment assistance. You can get that up to 75%. And if you want a scholarship, whether you are an adult or a student, the Central Carolina Community Foundation is offering scholarships for students and adults. They've got about $3 million that they're offering in scholarships. If you still need help with virtual learning and working, check out Rashonda Pratt's YouTube channel. Go over there and hit subscribe and get the information that you need. Now, open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is open. If you missed it last time, you can get uh, health insurance. We're going to talk with Rosalind Goodwin with the uh, South Carolina uh, Hospital Association this week for more information on that. Lastly, if you are like many people that are in need of a job, Rapid Reliable has job openings. Uh, you can see the information on there. They need a job. Uh, they need to hire folks not only in South Carolina, but in several states while they are uh, doing COVID testing. So again, you, do, you don't need any medical uh, experience and they have several job openings available, including um, testers, uh, administrative health, marketing help, uh, phone lines and things of that sort. So contact Reliable Testing for more information. I'm Trey Taylor and you're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19 as well this Wednesday, every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID brought to you by In It Together SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council. We are streaming live on the In It Together Facebook page. Please go over there and find out more about diabetes and how you can uh, get your diabetes manageable. You, we're also streaming live on Facebook. Please go over there to the Taylor May production page and hit like and follow and share. Not only will you be able to watch Coping with COVID Wednesday through Friday at 2 p.m. You're going to get all of your COVID-related updates. We're also streaming live on YouTube. Hello to all of you YouTubers. Thank you so much. Please hit the subscribe button so that we can get more of the message to the masses. Please go ahead and uh, post the share this information out so we can uh, get it out uh, because this is such a great topic we're talking about today. And we are talking about how pets can help you with your health. I uh, want to remind you, though, if you have diabetes and like to know how to keep your diabetes manageable, Dr. Nancy Richberg is looking for you to participate in a virtual class this month. Anyone in South Carolina can register. The program is statewide, year-long, on Zoom, so you don't have to worry about uh, not being able to be accessible. It's a great program, and if you need some help, there is help for you. Once again, Coping with COVID and In It Together present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday from the Diabetes Advisory Council of South Carolina and a state assistant epidemiologist, Dr. Linda Kelly, joins us again. And we're talking about pets and how they affect your health. Dr. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you for inviting me back. Yeah, listen, I'm sure that um, with everything you've got going on uh, right now, not that your job isn't taxing <laughs> anyway, but uh, this has been a very stressful time for you. Has it helped having fur babies? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very stressful time for everyone. I know that. But, you know, right now I literally have my right hand on my dog um, <laughs> because she's, you know, pets are so intuitive. They're so tuned into your emotions. Mm -hmm. She can tell when I'm stressed out. She can yeah. tell if I'm worried about something uh, that they're really so tuned into your emotions. It's been great having pets. Right now we have two dogs and two cats. Um, I, gosh, I can't remember a time where I wasn't with a, a pet in my adult life. They are a great stress reliever. Yeah, I used to. I mean, I've, I've, I had a dog growing up. And uh, of course, uh, you know, I've had three dogs at a time. I used to have three Shih Tzus and then I had three little um, whatever, just dogs, three dogs. Um, but you know what? I had to recognize at some point in my life, I was too busy for the dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I do want to talk a little bit and I miss my dogs, but 
I wasn't giving them what they needed. You know, I wasn't giving them the full quality of life. I mean, I was home just long enough to feed them, walk them and then go to bed. And then I was gone throughout the day. Yeah. But I'm a big pet person, love pets. I mean, I've had birds and lions and tigers <laughs> and bears. Oh my, you know what I mean? So let's talk a little bit first about physically, mentally and emotionally how pets help you. They help in a number of different ways. As you pointed out, that they also take care. You know, they have needs. Have, yeah. If you have a dog, you need to be walking that dog. But that's got a health benefit for you. Yeah. I think about times where ah, the weather wasn't great. I wouldn't normally go out for a walk, but the dog needs to be walked. Got so they get, you, they get you out and about. And so that's, that is a healthy behavior. But it's also true. I think you said in the very beginning of the show that there are studies that show blood pressure comes down when you're petting a pet. Your heart rate comes down. I mean, there are really di different physical changes with reducing stress and anxiety when you're with an animal. Wow. Why is that? What, what, what do the studies show actually happens when you're interacting with a pet that it really helps you emotionally, physically, mentally? Right. And I think that there are changes in your brain waves when you're petting a pet, but it's also, it's tactile, it's touch. We, you know, many people are in need of increased touch. Yeah, yeah. And and you can get that true love and affection from a pet as well. Yeah, we're going to talk with the folks with the Palmetto Life Support a little bit later, and uh, they said the same thing that they've seen an increase actually of pet adoptions during COVID mm -hmm. because, as you said, people need that one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication, touch, interaction with another being, human or otherwise, <laughs> that mm -hmm. they haven't had. The one thing that worries me about that, though, people who may have adopted a pet during COVID and maybe they're not at they're working at home or maybe they're not working. What happens to that pet when you yeah. go back to work yeah. and suddenly, you know, are, do you have the time to take care of them? You know, how is that animal going to stress out when it's used right. to being with you, you know, all day, every day? And suddenly you go out the door and you're gone for 10, 12 hours. Yeah. That worries me. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that, too, is what people should remember before getting a pet, because as much uh, good as it is, as you said, it helps you physically because of the touch, mentally and emotionally. But that's a big responsibility, a pet. Mm hmm. And uh, absolutely. And I feel like I've got a lot of different stories I could tell about pets that I have had over the years. Um, but absolutely, the the issue about what's the right pet for you? For example, I have a friend who has an Australian uh, sheep dog. Uh, it, you know, one of those dogs, it's a herding dog. And that dog goes crazy if he doesn't have a job. It, you know, he needs a lot of land. He has a lot of energy. He needs to somebody to run with. Um, and obviously that's not a pet that's going to work for everybody. Right. You live in an apartment. You don't want to have a big dog. What are you going to do right. with a, a huge dog? And then sometimes people adopt pets not realizing that there were allergies. So you have to think ahead about, you know, all those considerations. Yeah, I uh, had a, a bird. <laughs> once like I said, I've had it all I had a bird once and and I ended up I was I given it to my aunt because she lost her dog and wanted a bird and she ended up being allergic to it so I had to take the, uh, mm -hmm. the bird back so you're right there's so many considerations people have to take into advantage even with kids are your kids ready for a dog you know there's a funny story about my neighbor across the street solicitor uh, Byron Gibson and uh you know his his kids petition for a dog. They sent a, yeah. a letter and a whole, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. I don't think I've ever seen those kids walk that dog. <laughs> Byron and his wife walking the dog, you know, so you have to look at, are these kids really going to take, you know, walk this dog? Is this going to be my responsibility? That is a common story. Uh, and <laughs> I, I'll tell a funny one of my own. When my son was eight, he wanted a pet snake. Mm. Now, I, 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 I'm not wigged out by snakes. Okay, you want a pet snake. And he <laughs> swore he was going to take care of that pet snake. Well, I'm telling you, that was 16 years, 17 years ago. We still have that snake. He's <laughs> long since gone. We still have the snake. Right. So that's the other thing to think about is yeah. how long do pets live? 
Yeah. You know, to get a, a pet dog, yeah, that's a commitment for 15 years. Pet cat, maybe longer. Pet bird, how long did you have a bird? Birds and reptiles, they can live a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. We're talking to uh, Dr. Jane Kelly. She's assistant epidemiologist for the state of South Carolina. She's over at DHEC. And we're talking about the positive effects that dogs can have on your health. And as she said, while there are studies that show mentally, physically, emotionally, definitely lowers your mm -hmm. blood pressure. Um, you really need to be uh, conscientious about one, what kind of pet is right for you and your family. Right. And, and I'll put in a plug for cats as well. People sometimes <laughs> think, oh, cats, they're aloof. You know, they're, they're not as good a pet in yeah. some way as a dog. But that's not been my experience. I, we have two cats right now. They're both very affectionate. It's different. They're quieter. <laughs> they're not, you know, running to greet you at the door and jumping right, all over right. you. But they're still affectionate. And they still have that, those same health benefits of lowering blood pressure, of helping you feel calm. People sleep better when they have pets as a rule of thumb. Mm, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, let's talk a little bit about your pets. You mentioned that you have <laughs> pets and you have a couple of pet stories. Now, wh who are these little critters? <laughs> so, so there are actually three pets in this picture. Oh, okay. um, and, and I apologize for the blurry pictures. I chose them to tell the story rather than for the quality of the photo. <laughs> that's, that is, those three cats are my Aunt Veronica's cats. Oh, my okay. Aunt Veronica is 90 something. Oh, my and goodness. she was living living alone and she moved from Pennsylvania to California where my cousin, her son lives. Well, she couldn't take the cats with the move. And I said, don't worry, we'll work this out. I will take them in temporarily. So my incre incredibly understanding husband was okay with my taking in these three cats temporarily. And then once she got an apartment and was settled, we then brought them to her in California. But I tell that story because as much as I think pets are a, a wonderful thing for the elderly, for keeping them company, for all those health benefits that we talked about, you also have to have a plan. She was very concerned about, literally she was talking about what happens to my cats if I die. Yeah. And you know, not to bring in a somber issue, I just feel that you know, having a pet is a wonderful thing, but it's a responsibility too. So and thinking through some of those things, but we were able to get those cats to California. They've been reunited and they, everyone is living happily ever after. Great. SCD heck and uh, assistant epidemiologist, uh, Dr. Jane Kelly joins us on a uh, wellness Wednesday, wellness Wednesday, every Wednesday sponsored by in it together SC and the South Carolina diabetes advisory council. And we're talking about the positive effects of pets, on your health. Now, what about Bongo? You've got Bongo here. <laughs> <laughs> you even knew his name because his name is on the picture, isn't yes, it? Bongo. So that, that is our cat, Bongo. Um, we did not, uh, we were not the original owners of Bongo. The original owners of Bongo found that their son was allergic to cats. So they were looking for a good home for Bongo. Right. So that, that handsome dude in the window uh, came to live with us several years ago. And I think he's, he's a classic case of, he did seem to be an aloof cat at first, but of course he's been transplanted to another home. Right. We yeah. already had another cat and she was not happy that he arrived. I know. So that's, that's another thing to think about. If you already have one pet, you know, we had one dog introduce the second dog. No problem. Dog was happy. Oh, you brought me a present. Another dog. Okay. Very happy. <laughs> the cat on the other hand was not happy that we brought that in that big male cat. And it took a long time to get them to be, uh, you know, friends together. Finally, he is relaxed, but that's just another consideration. If you already have a pet and you want to get another one, Mm, think about what's going to be compatible. And I didn't think dogs and cats got along together. Right, right. right. That's what you in the cartoons. Cartoon. Right. <laughs> no problem. The dogs love the cats. I see them. They curl up together on the couch. It has not been a problem in our experience. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now you have, is this the first cat that you had? This oh, is that, that is Leo. And Leo came to us with a story. Leo was a stray that was found in a dumpster, mm. which just breaks my heart. Yes. And, and some people rescued him from the dumpster and then needed to find him a good home. And so we, we took him in uh, as a good home. But I, I, what breaks my heart are stories like this because there are many strays that are out there suffering 
or animals that are in pet shelters, yes. um, but yeah. they're, you know, they are in need of a good home. And then people will spend hundreds of dollars, if not more, to get a special breed from a puppy mill. And, yeah. and maybe they have a reason why they want to get that certain breed. But I just would encourage people to look at, you know, we are in our neighborhood. We have a pet helpers. Um, and that's where we got our second dog. I would just urge people to take a look at all the pet rescues um, societies that are on social media. You know, if you yes. know you want a specific breed, fine. But but look for one that it, that is in need of a rescue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then you talked about the fact that you do have dogs. Now this is Daisy, right? This is Daisy. Um, and Daisy is looking really skinny. I first met Daisy yes. in Juliet, Juliet, Georgia, where she was hanging out literally at the Whistle Stop Cafe. You remember that movie, <laughs> Fried Green Tomatoes? They took, they took the old um, setting, the movie set for Fried Green Tomatoes, and they turned it into a little tourist trap. And she hung out and probably, you know, leftover bits Ate of hamburgers and yeah. fried green tomatoes and was, uh, you know, I stopped there, went in the restaurant, came out and here's this pitiful dog. And the waitress came out and said, you can take her, you can take her. She doesn't have an owner. And I thought, oh, I can't do that. I can't just come home with this dog. But look at her. I had to come home with this dog. <laughs> And, well, and she, Dr. Kelly, you're the pet <laughs> whisperer. <laughs> well, take a look at the next picture of her a yes. couple of years later. There yes. she is, yeah. looking looking much better with her companion in the background. Yeah. That's Sandy, our second dog that we got from Pet Helpers. So I, you know, I just would urge people to consider getting a, you know, a a mutt is often a great personality yeah. dog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just think about how much you improve that change that animal's life. Yeah. So how has how have the um, dogs help and cats? Uh, because you've got you said two cats and two dogs, three cats. And yes. Three, and a partridge in a pear tree. What else? <laughs> you got there? Well, I I told you we have a snake. We actually have three right, of them. <laughs> I'll bring them out and show them if you want, but I thought maybe. You can, but because I'm over here and you're over there. <laughs> so be careful, so. I'll do it on the break. <laughs> what 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 can you say that the animals, the wide array of animals that have uh, entered into your life, how have they uh helped you? Again, because you're 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 in a stressful job on any other day. This last year, I'm sure, has been on 10. Well, I want to tell a story of balance. And the, the balance is pets are a wonderful calming effect. As we've talked about, uh, they often, because they have needs like physical activity needs for dogs, that you take them outside on days where you might not otherwise go. So yeah. it gives you that opportunity for increased physical activity. There's family bonding over pets. The story between my, my aunt, my cousin, and her cats and me. I mean, that brought us all together as a family because there, there was a need. The flip side of balance, though, is making sure that you're fair to your pets. Yes. They're not they're not inexpensive. All of my animals that are free to a good home, yeah, they were free coming in, but there's vet bills, there's food bills, there's flea and tick medicine. I, you know, I don't want to discourage people. I want people to have a realistic idea walking into something. Do you want a big dog or do you just want that small companion who's going to be honestly cheaper in terms of dog food yeah. um, or or if you don't feel like you can walk them cats cats are great pets there's certainly lots of other pets rabbits they're soft they're nice um they, you know there are other pets that people get ferrets are more of a challenge but even my husband had a white rat growing up he loved that pet you know, wow. we'll climb on his shoulder and carry him around so there are lots of variety of pets that can give you um uh, not only affection, but also give you insight into the kinds of emotions that other creatures experience. Because yeah. I, you, you saw the pictures of that dog that looked so sad and then so wow. so joyful. I mean, it's a joy to take them out in the backyard and play. Yeah, yeah, and and which leads to another um, thing, like you said, space. You know, and you said this early. You mm -hmm. have to take into consideration what space you have and um, what kind of pet can accommodate that space. So, And pets have a different philosophy of life. You know, it's just simpler. 
I often wonder if we just make our lives too complicated. You know, we're worried about the future. We're worried about the past. Mm -hmm. We're worried about so many different things, so many what ifs, so many things that are out of control, out of our control. I don't think my dogs are worried about those things. I think they live in the present. Well, yeah. they might be living for that biscuit after dinner, but, but by and large, they live in the present. And yeah. I think there's a lesson to be learned from that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dr. Jane Kelly, state epidemiologist uh, for South Carolina, we're talking about how pets affect your health. Uh, can you give us a little um, COVID update? You, you know, in the, uh, in the opening, you know, I did mention that numbers are doing tremendously well right now. I would couch that with a little bit okay. of caution. Okay. Are not, are, you are right that we are, uh, we've had a tremendous decrease in the number of daily new cases, thank heavens, because it really skyrocketed after the holidays. Yeah. But what we've really done is returned to our November numbers. No. Okay. So, is so this is good, this is good, but the battle's not over yet. You know, we've returned to normal, but normal is still mm -hmm. a lot of cases. And so I, I just, I know vaccines are here, people are getting vaccinated, numbers yeah. are coming down in South Carolina and nationwide, but we still need to keep the pressure up, still need to keep the pressure on doing those things about wearing masks, keeping distance. It's still cold, so people are not spending as much time outside. Outside yeah. is always better than inside. You wanna get together with friends and family. Again, I would urge you, you know, meet outside. I have a friend I go dog walking with once a week. We meet each other and we're outside with our dogs and six feet apart. Um, so yes, the numbers are better. And yes, we're getting more vaccine each week. We still, it's still very limited number of doses, but mm -hmm. the number of doses South Carolina is getting is starting to increase. And I think there's a third vaccine on the horizon. Right, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the nice thing about Johnson and Johnson vaccine is it's one and you're done. You don't right. need a booster shot. You get one shot. It is 85% effective in preventing severe disease and 100% effective in preventing death. There's not been a single person in, you know, they tested Johnson Johnson vaccine in over 60,000 people in several different countries and found that it was effective in preventing death in South Africa, in Brazil, you know, oh, as we start right. to talk about these new variants, will it work right. against these others? Yes, it was effective against the South African variant. So I, you know, I, I think the Johnson and Johnson offers a really nice option too, for people who want one and be done. Um, it is highly efficacious, highly effective. Great. Two more COVID update questions. Uh, we hear that uh, we should be double masking right now. Is that correct? The recommendation from CDC is to be double masking. Um, I think it's a, uh, I'll tell you why I think it's a good idea and I'll tell you my concerns with this. Good idea because it, the studies have shown that you can really knock down to less than 5% of particles getting through those double masks. The trick to them is the first layer of mask has to really fit closely on your face. And what I like for that is the surgical mask, mm -hmm. the, the, those paper procedural masks. Right, I'm, not, right. I'm not talking the N95, I'm talking the ones that you know surgeons or nurses would be wearing in the operating room. The reason I like that is it's three paper layers and the middle layer is special. It's got a, a special weave to it that sets up a, an electric charge. And so that, and it's also easier to breathe through. I mean. People right. in the operating room, they're wearing them eight, 10 hours a day. They're easier to breathe through. But then the second layer would be a cloth layer that acts almost more like a shield as a mechanical stop. The problem is, and this is the challenge, if you're wearing too many layers and you can't breathe easily through them, you're going to be tempted to loosen those ear straps. Yeah. And then you're just breathing in the side and it just, you know, you just blew the whole purpose right. of the thing. Right. So double masking is better. I would recommend either get a paper mask as the first layer and a cloth mask as your second, or get a mask that has two layers and a pocket so you can put an insert in the middle. That's mm -hmm. another option because that way you, you get three layers, you get that benefit. What is the insert that you should put in and where do you get the inserts? So the insert should be of a different material. 
So okay. they you know they sell special like carbon okay. inserts on on at the store and online, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. If you have a cloth mask that, for example, is made out of cotton or a cotton polyester mix, then what you want to do is have your that middle layer, that insert, be made of some different material, silk, okay. nylon, um, cotton batting, like that you might use in, in quilting, uh, just something that is a different type of material. Great. All right. Last question for uh, the COVID update. What about children and vaccinations? None of these vaccinations are uh, have been approved for children yet. You're right. You are correct. So the Pfizer vaccine has been approved for down to age 16, but nothing has been approved for younger ages than that. But they are studying that. They are doing those phase three trials right now in children age 12 through 16. And I think they're starting in a younger age group as well, or they're they're developing those trials for a younger age group. There, there are a couple of reasons for that. You know, children are not little adults. They have different biology, different metabolism, different right. developmental needs. So that we're a lot more cautious about vaccines and, and, and go more slowly with developing vaccines for kids. The other thing though, is that severe disease is really quite rare in children. Now I know there have been some awful cases of children getting severe disease and even children dying from COVID-19, but it's very rare. Most kids have very mild disease or they, uh, some of them are asymptomatic. So we're not in a rush to try and give, say, a five-year-old a vaccine when that five-year-old may have only the mildest symptoms. We are, we are concerned about getting that vaccine into the 75-year-old who yeah. is at, you know, at a much higher risk of severe disease and death. So no vaccines for kids yet. They are studying it. Probably won't be available for, for several months yet. Okay. All right. Dr. Jane Kelly is the assistant epidemiologist for the state of South Carolina. She's over at SCDHEC uh, giving us a, a coronavirus and vaccine update. And then, of course, we opened the conversation about pets and uh, how great they are to help you with your health. Uh, just to summarize, Dr. Kelly said, helps lower your blood pressure. They're calming, uh, but make sure that you get the right pet for you and that, um, you know, what... It, it, it entails with everything that entails with a pet because it could end up doing the exact opposite of what it's supposed to do. You don't want to add two cats that die <laughs> with a, and, and lead to a more stressful situation. You need That's to know right. what you're getting into. That's right. That's right. Dr. Jane Kelly, as always, we appreciate so much uh, your coming on and sharing your expertise. And thank you for look, being such a dog, a cat rescue, a pet rescue. You've got <laughs> a lot of stuff going on over there. Look, girl, you need to open up your own shelter. <laughs> They just find us. I, we're not out there looking for them. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, that, I think that says so much about you, though. I think that says a lot about your heart. So thank oh, you. Oh, well, thank you. But they give a lot back. Yeah, they do. They do. I tell you, I miss my pets. I miss my pets. But I had to, like you said, recognize I don't have time right now for them. Mm -hmm. I'm not. It, it just it's, it didn't help either one, any of us, you know, but, but I do miss them. So hopefully at some point I can have a fish or something. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, fish work well for some yeah, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Jane Kelly, thank you again so much for joining us today on Kofi with COVID. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, in It Together, SC and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Hey, don't forget, we are streaming live on the In It Together uh, Facebook page. And if you want some help uh, learning how to control your diabetes, please go to the In It Together website and or Facebook page and get the vital information that they share every single day. Coming up next, we're talking to the folks at Palmetto Life Support. We went over there and visited them and we're gonna talk about more about how pets affect your health. That's next on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Coping with COVID and In It Together present Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by the Diabetes Advisory Council of South Carolina and DHEC's Division of Diabetes and Heart Disease Management. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. This flu season arrives during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Groups at risk for serious illness from COVID-19 and flu are similar, but complications from flu are much higher in young children. Everyone over six months of age should get a flu shot to help prevent more illnesses, hospitalizations, and deaths in South Carolina. The flu is not just a cold. Each year, many South Carolinians are hospitalized from the flu and even die. Getting the flu vaccine is the best protection against the flu for everyone in your family. The flu vaccine is safe, effective, and does not cause the flu. You can make a difference this flu season by protecting yourself from the flu. It's important that I protect my baby. It's important that we protect our families. It's important that we protect our schools. And our students. It's important. It's important. It's important. It's important that we protect our state. Talk to your health care provider, pharmacist, or health department about the flu vaccine today. Every cookie sold in the Girl Scout cookie program helps girls learn lifelong lessons in people skills, decision making, and goal setting. It's amazing how much you can learn from a cookie. Celebrating Black History Month, Coping with COVID presents African Americans in the White House. South Carolina native Jamie R. Harrison is the first African American to chair the Democratic National Committee. The past chair of the South Carolina Democratic Party for five years, Harrison was selected to the United States Senate Youth Program and received a scholarship to Yale University. Last year, Harrison broke the record for U.S. Senate campaign fundraising by securing $109 million. He is the first African American to serve in the role of chairperson for the Democratic Democratic National Committee, South Carolina native Jamie Harrison, a black history maker in the Biden-Harris administration. Celebrating Black History Month, Coping with COVID presents African Americans in the White House. From TaylorMade Productions. You're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. I'm Trey Taylor. I'm here at a Palmetto Lifeline with Mike Coconut. Mike, you, we're here in the cat room. Um, and I know that you just mentioned to me that you had a massive cat adoption this weekend. Why do you think that was this weekend? Well, Valentine's I, Day? <laughs> I, you know, that that probably did play a part in it. Um, you know, I think there's different, definitely time of, of the year where our adoptions pick up, where people are looking to bring new family members into the, to their homes. Um, certainly with the pandemic, people are home a lot more, working from home. Um, so they just have a lot more time. And um, yeah, we think probably related to Valentine's Day, um, just people were waiting to for that for this weekend to to add family members. Has COVID affected adoptions? Um, I would have to say yes, in pretty much in a very positive way. Again, because I think people are home, um, and and a lot of folks are home indefinitely. You know, working from home or just um, have more time. So. You know, it's it's definitely the, a good opportunity to have enough time to, you know, adopt a homeless pet and give them a good amount of time to adjust. It's it's always hard. It can be hard, not always hard, to bring home um, a new family member, especially one that's not going to speak our language exactly, um, and you know, have gone through many transitions and then even going into a new environment um, can be an adjustment, even even if we're all excited to have a new baby in the house, one well, new fur baby is what, what we say here in the <laughs> adoption world. And um, so, yeah, so um, we've seen a, a lot of adoptions, uh, an increase, a large increase in adoptions since COVID kind of caused the quarantine this to happen yeah so. what do you think um having a pet does for a person why do you think pet adoption has been so you know you mentioned okay people are home 
But is it therapeutic too? Absolutely. Um, and, and it always really has been, I think, something that um, you, when I'm, from an emotional standpoint, you know, I think we, you know, life can be tough. And I think, you know, when we look at animals that, that are, that need to be adopted because they were abandoned or perhaps um, abused or neglected, um, just simply we can relate to them. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, there's this, uh, you know, we can, there's a sympathy and empathy um, with with pets, um, cats, dogs, not just, I mean, we here adopt out cats and dogs, but other agencies have all types of, of mm -hmm. companion animals. And um, so, you know, it's having that being in your home that you can relate to where it's not always something that we can relate to other humans in our lives, our non-humans, you know, especially coming out of a shelter environment, you know, we, we feel, we feel each other, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, physically, you know, for physical health, I mean, um, I know I, my dogs keep me fit or almost fit <laughs> and, um, and active because, you know, they enjoy playtime. They enjoy, um, exercise just like I do. And I, I think that, um, you know, there's been a very brief moments of time in my life where we didn't have a dog or dogs in the house. And, and, you know, just, you know, it's not as much incentive to get out and, mm. and be active, you know, um, we're big hikers in our house. Um, and it's always so much more fun. And when the dogs can come with us, um, but also, um, also from a physical standpoint, you know, um, dogs, cats, um, interacting with them, touching them, snuggling with them helps lower our blood pressure. It helps, you know, just cause a lot of de-stress. So it's a, it's an intimacy that I think, um, people don't really consider, you know, from that level, but it really does, you know, we're sharing, we're, they're trusting us and they're giving us purpose. And that is important, but it studies have proven just, just the, you know, the, the calm interactions um, of having a companion. I mean, you know, or interacting with a different type yeah. of friend is really, really beneficial for our health. And, you know, the unconditional love, you know, uh, you know, you said uh, interacting with a different type of friend, someone who is you know, not going to disappoint you, not going to talk back, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be there when they say they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and absolutely. I mean, you know, I, um, I just know, I mean, just from experience, the loss of a pet when, when yeah. they reach the yes. end of their life, yes, I have um, to. um, you know, it's, it's, we cherish the, our, our time with them and, 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 I, we've talked with so many people who have felt the more of it, almost a, a bigger loss from losing their 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 pet, uh, their yeah. dog or cat or um, other um, pets um, more than sometimes humans in their life. And and it doesn't. It, it, I think it's just because because of that feeling of unconditional. Uh, of love, it's it's love. It really is, and um, it doesn't mean that you know we as humans can't feel that for each other, but it's pretty much always there with with our our dogs and cat friend, our dog and cat friends. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I you know, I just I I think about you know just seeing when we have animals even in our care at home at a lifeline. Um, some of them have just, you know, they've had to fend for themselves for so long. Um, you know, they might have come from a situation or a family that was overwhelmed in life and they just could not provide care anymore. And, um, and just, you know, for whatever reason. And so to see them come into our care and to begin to thrive and, and you know, recover from, from, trauma or neglect is, um, 
is just also very rewarding. And then we also then get to share that with our adopters and helping them go in, you know, transition yeah. into a, a, a permanent home. Um, and I love watching my cats and dogs at home. Like just, they have their own family, their own mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. and then they welcome me into that community yeah. or us into that community. And it's just, um, which is great. Well, I can tell you're very passionate about it. You, you're definitely in your calling. You're in, <laughs> in you feel you're very at home here in the cat house. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, yeah. They're also very at home. <laughs> yeah, they are. They really are. They really are. And I'm so glad they're okay with us being here and, <laughs> and talking about them. Mike, so tell me how uh, people can go about adopting and or fostering and what the difference is here at Palmetto Lifeline. So, um, so yeah, I'll talk with, about fostering first. So we have a, a very successful, um, always growing foster program and fostering um, dogs and cats for Palmetto Lifeline is providing a temporary home um, until they can be adopted into mm -hmm. a permanent home. So, um, you know, we have a, a train, uh, an application that um, folks interested in becoming foster parents would fill out. You know, it's just getting basic information about the household, um, you know, experience. Um, and then we, um, you know, And there's different, you know, what's great is there's always people who prefer different types of fosters. Okay. We have we have neonatal fosters mm. where, you know, um, maybe a mama cat or dog ends up perhaps um, oh. being killed and oh. there's orphaned babies that cannot eat on their own. So they require constant bottle feeding and stimulation gotcha. and nurturing. Um, until they're old enough to, and to a take family might home. be able to provide that. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we have um, um, that's especially in the spring and and throughout the pretty much the spring throughout the summer and really late fall. That's a huge need of ours. Um, it's definitely a lot of work because it's a it's it's yeah you're it's somebody's mama <laughs> yeah, exactly. or cat or dog mama yeah. Um, we have um, we have animals that we. Um, taken through from our municipal um, uh, placement partners the, with Le Lexington and Richland County, where dogs that maybe ended up as strays or had to be given up and taken to the municipal shelter needed to um, come into our dog. develop an upper respiratory infection or gotcha. kennel cough. Um, they might be underweight um, have, or dealing with some. Right. So um, it's animals with special needs or special attention that they need that a family might be able to provide. Exactly. Where right. they just, you know, might just be a couple weeks. It might be um, a month or so. But generally it's, it's, it's a, the plan is for them to, you know, get assessed Better. here, mm -hmm. you know, medic get their initial medical care started here and then, or it's not always medical care. It could be, yeah, it yeah. Could be emotional care as yeah. well, and sometimes both. Um, and then they're, um, they're, they go into the foster home and, and get what they need. And then um, pretty much as soon as they're ready, then, and we have, we, we do need to make sure that we don't overcrowd our building. Mm -hmm. So then they'll um, come back here when we have room and they're, they're ready. Um, and sometimes they're adopted before they even come back here. And I was going to ask you that. Is there ever a case where, you know, you start out fostering some 
one or you know a dog or cat yes. and then you know it ends up being an adopt some woman <laughs> well we, and we actually we have a saying it's or, or a term for that it's called foster failures <laughs> um, and pretty much i don't know maria i don't know if you have experienced that i know i've been a a, a a failed foster parent many times well i don't think that's a failure i think that's like you know it's, it's a it's a success you you successfully foster to the point where you went all in. I think well, that's no, a good... I, no, and that uh, <laughs> you know that's that's very very much true. I think why um, we joke about being <laughs> failures because sometimes when um, if if um, sometimes we lose foster families that because they reach their limit. Gotcha. So, oh, I see. Know, that's yes. Where, oh, I got you. My house is Oh, <laughs> right, because no I'm yeah, because I've adopted everybody I fostered. I can't foster. Yeah, that's 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 another problem to but, have. <laughs> but, but um, but it's but ultimately it is a good thing. Yeah, and um, you know, and there's always folks that move to the area or you find out about us, and mm -hmm. you know, we work, we um, get them involved. So, um, we also have hospice fosters. So we oh, will oftentimes wow. yeah. um end up taking in animals that um maybe they have really extensive medical issues or maybe even terminal medical issues that are just they're probably not they're just going to stay in our care until they and we're going to monitor their quality of life and their health and if and, and when it, if and when it becomes time to transition um yeah know, into the yeah, next yeah part of yeah yeah yeah. So what we 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 that's you have that option. Yeah. So. And then as far as adoption, what do people need to know and do if they would like to adopt a dog or cat from Palmetto Lifeline? So um, it's a little. It starts off being somewhat similar to applying to be a foster parent. We do have an application process um, where um, you know if we we do want to make sure everybody in the household is going to be on the same yeah, page yeah. and that there's not really, you know, at least, at least with adults in the house that there's not really necessarily a surprise, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, um, because it's important, um, for, for it to succeed that mm -hmm. everybody knows what they're getting into. Um, you know, some animals transition into the household much easier than others. Um, so we want to make sure everybody has the tools that they need and the information and the counseling that we would provide for them. Um, they would um, then receive a follow-up um, communication after they apply, um, whether it's in person or online. How long does that typically take from application time to... We, we try and make it... We try and expedite because it's important because yeah. there, there's always so many things going on here, but it... I can clarify with you, but I believe we re we try and get back to people within 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Um, with at least with the communication and maybe some additional questions. Mm -hmm. um, so. And then yeah. after they're approved, is then they come in and choose an animal, or do they choose and then get approved? It's um, well, it's you know usually. Um, people, it's sometimes it's kind of one and the same. Okay. We because our um, adoptable animals are posted on our website um, okay. through PetPoint and PetFinder. Um, people, there's usually a link to apply for that specific okay. animal. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and then kind of start that kind of starts the process. We do also have people who just will walk into the building to visit, and they will. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and that one often to... see animals here that, um, and then can apply at that time. Okay. Um, we'll yeah. <laughs> verify, but I believe you have to be 21 years old okay. to adopt. And, um, you know, if um, there are other, particularly with other dogs in the household, we do prefer that the resident dog would, and we set up an appointment to do this, but the resident dog would meet. Okay, Whatever. yeah, so dog. everybody can get in, to know each other. Yeah, exactly. Make sure that, because um, there are some dogs that might get along with, you know, some get along with almost everybody. Some are very selective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we just want to make sure it's as, as, as much of a success as possible. We know that, you know, and this isn't 
just a palmetto lifeline, but any adoption is there's always potential for it not to work out. We do um, actually have a policy here that we always take our animals back, no, no matter what the circumstances um, are, because we believe that you know we are, you know, we believe in providing for them for life. So right. you know whether they, um, so, I mean, we've had unfortunately, um, you know, perhaps a owner passes, a doctor passes mm -hmm. away after mm -hmm. ten years, and. You know, there's no one in, in the family in the that family. takes the dog yeah. or cat. Um, you know, we will always take um, our adopted animals back. So. We're talking to the folks at uh, Palmetto Lifeline. Uh, I'm Trey Taylor. And, of course, we're talking this Wellness Wednesday about pet health and, and how pets affect your health. And uh, we've heard from Mike that it's physical, mental, emotional. He's been telling us about how you can uh, adopt or foster a pet if you're interested here at Palmetto Lifeline. Other than fostering and adopting, what other ways can people get involved? Volunteering, food, what, what do you need? Um vast volunteer program with all different types of needs, whether um, people would be want to do hands-on care with animals. You know, we have volunteers come in and walk mm -hmm. um, and walk exercise dogs. our dogs. Okay, cool. um, we have a very dedicated uh, cat room, our cat adoption room um, volunteer uh, team that come in and and give lots of love and stimulation to our cats um, that are waiting for adoption. Some of them can be kind of on the shy side. So our volunteers will help come in and socialize them, get them more trusting to um, to being around people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're not all shy. Actually, we have quite a few that would just um, climb in our <laughs> on the way home. Yeah, could. yeah. Um, and then, you know, there's also administrative opportunities volunteer opportunities. Um, we have a pet soup program, which is essentially a food bank um, resource for pets. Um, and we actually, it's a, a pretty massive program that does require quite a bit of volunteer help because we, um, we um, meet uh, twice a month down at Harvest Hope Food Bank, um, where we will hand out um, pet food, food too, yeah. to um, folks in the program and um, and then we also our spay neuter program um, we do accept volunteers helping the this clinic team um, wrap surgical packs do laundry um, all the things that just you know they're helping okay. clean cages while we're um, getting our patients you know to and from um, the spay neuter uh, suites and so I mean just it's there's just all different types of opportunities and especially for folks who can't perhaps even foster or adopt but really do want to be able to help animals mm -hmm. and, and you know find purpose in that um again good for our physical and um mental well-being um you know those opportunities exist so. all right uh the information if you want it for a uh, palmetto lifeline is on the screen check them out email call them visit the website and get more information if you'd like to volunteer as uh, mike just said or if you'd like to inquire about a dog or a cat they'd love to talk to you about doing that anything else you want to share with us mike um i mean mm -hmm. I, thank you so much for for coming and we uh we really it. Well, thank you so much it's for the work that you're doing. Love your mask. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. That was great. Great, great, great. So listen, as uh, they said at Palmetto uh, Lifeline, if you want more information, uh, please uh, see the information on the screen. If you want to adopt, if you want to foster an animal, and if you need more information or you want to volunteer, they've got it there for you. Listen, do you have a, a story that could help someone cope with COVID? Please go to the TaylorMade production page on Facebook and inbox me, and we would love to feature your story or initiative on coping with COVID. Do you have a product or service that could help someone cope with COVID? Well, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. We would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like uh, In It Together. 
SC, the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council, and our other sponsors. We would love for you to be a part. Listen, coming up tomorrow, uh, getting your finances in order. We're going to talk with a Susan Liu, who will tell us about investing, about saving, and about getting our finances back on track. And then Rosalind Goodwin with the South Carolina Hospital Association will talk to us about enrolling in the Affordable Care Act, ACA, open enrollment is back open. And she's going to give us this information. And then Faith Friday with uh, Raquel Richardson Thomas. This is a powerful sister who uh, went through a lot of abuse, foster care, and then uh, came out on top owning five successful businesses before the age of 30. And then she came back to South Carolina, where she's from, and is doing some amazing work for children in our area. All of that and more coming up this week on Coping with COVID. Hey, don't forget, if you have a diabetes and would like to know how to keep your diabetes manageable, Dr. Nancy Richberg is looking for folks to participate in a virtual class. You can also uh, do all of that. You can see the information on the screen. You can also do all of that on it's the In It Together SC website and the In It Together SC Facebook page. As always, I leave you with a reading from Jesus Calling. Today, February 17th, Jesus says, your relationship with me is meant to be vibrant and challenging as I invade more and more areas of your life. Do not fear change, for I am making you a new creation with old things passing away and new things continually on the horizon. When you cling to old ways and sameness, you resist my work within you. Amen. I want you to embrace all that I'm doing in your life, finding your security in me alone. Hmm. Although each day contains 24 hours, every single one presents a unique set of circumstances. Don't try to force fit today into yesterday's mold. Instead, ask me to open your eyes so you can find all that I have prepared for you in the precious day of life. That's your Jesus calling for today, February 17th. Mitchell P. George says, amen, amen to you too, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us once again on Coping with COVID. In It Together, SC and the Diabetes Advisory Council presents Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday. And we're so proud to be part of this partnership to help you get your life and your health, which you deserve back on track. Until the next time, I wish you peace and abundant blessings. And to remind you, Please wear your mask over your nose and under your chin. See you tomorrow. Coping with COVID and In It Together present Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by the Diabetes Advisory Council of South Carolina and DHEX Division of Diabetes and Heart Disease Management. Coping, Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor.